The Elm Hill City Zoo is proud to present a new habitat for the mute swans from the newest Eurasia animal pack. Join me as we build this natural looking pond for those beautiful birds to enjoy. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. And welcome back to the Elm Hill City Zoo where we'll build a new enclosure for my favorite animal from the newest Eurasia animal pack, the mute swan. You really have no idea how much I am excited for this one. I think that the mute swan is such an unexpected addition to Planet Zoo and it is such a good addition to Planet Zoo. It is an animal that I think a lot of us wanted, but no one expected it to be actually added into Planet Zoo. Uh, we didn't have any waterfowl. This is our first proper waterfowl added to the game. So of course, I just had to build something for it. I just had to add it to the Elm Hill City Zoo. By the way, if you are watching this video on the day of its premiere, this should be actually a third video that is going to be uh, uploaded to my channel. Uh, there already should be a uh, video showcasing all the new things added to Planet Zoo with the new free update 1.16. And also, of course, an overview of the entire Eurasia animal pack where we go through all of the animals one by one. Uh, we are looking at the babies, new color morphs and Zoopedia facts and so on. And of course, I will put the links to those videos uh, on the screen right now uh, and in the description so you can go and check them out. The new DLC is just so, so wonderful. I love it so much. It has some of the best animal models in the game, like hands down. Those animals are all so beautiful, so well made and so accurate. Just look at the mute swan that we are building for today. It looks almost photorealistic. Uh, it looks so good in the enclosure when we'll finish it. I just love it. I think that it is an animal that we really needed in Planet Zoo. It is both an ambient animal. You can just add it to the natural water sections in your zoo, like lakes, ponds, and so on. Uh, and pretend that it is actually a wild uh, mute swan that just decided, you know, to make it its home, that it just, you know, <laughs> flew there and decided to stay there. Or you can build a dedicated habitat for it, just like we are doing it right now. Uh, we are building this habitat uh, in the Elm Hill City Zoo, uh, very close to the Wildcat House. I was sort of like going through the entire zoo, looking for a place where I can actually build uh, some like a natural looking water section. I didn't want to like squeeze it in too much. Uh, and I had this space between the lion and the Siberian tiger a habitat and I think it suits in there just perfect. What I also have planned is to add the swans maybe in some natural water sections that we have in the zoo. For example, we have this small pond in the front of the reptile house and I thought that a pair of swans will also look amazing in there so I might actually do it. But today we are building a dedicated mute swan habitat. I actually saw some people being very very surprised that the mute swan is a zoo animal. And I sort of get it, the mute swan has a very wild range, it lives in many places in Europe, so uh, if you are European, you probably know this uh, this animal from just, you know, your wildlife encounters or just going to the park, it is just there in a pond or in some lakes that you saw and so on. I saw tons of them in the wild, uh, I actually live very close to the Baltic Sea, so so uh, in the summer, there's a lot of them there. Uh, but that being said, I still saw a lot of them in European zoos. Uh, this is both just to display them, but also what is very important and what I am sort of imagining uh, today for our Elm Hill City Zoo, that seeing your local wildlife in your local zoo is not that uncommon, actually. Uh, I know that you normally associate zoos with animals like tigers, like lions, like elephants and all those exotic, big, iconic species. But sometimes the whole sections in your local zoo zoos are committed to your local wildlife. Uh, and this is both for the educational purposes to teach young people 
children or just adults who don't know about those animals uh, how you can protect them how they actually look uh, some people don't know that such an animal exists in the area where they live even so uh, this ed educational purpose i think is very important and the second purpose of those local wildlife section uh, that i really wanted to mention here uh, is that sometimes those sections in zoos are sort of like uh, animal wildlife sanctuaries where they hold animals that are injured, that are orphaned, that were raised by humans, that are just unable to go back to the wild because they wouldn't survive there. Uh, and this is something that I am seeing here for our swans in the Elm Hill City Zoo, uh, because I believe that in my local zoo, we also have swans and this is the same story. So, uh, so we are having something like this in the Elm Hill City Zoo. It is a sanctuary for uh, injured animals and abundant swans. We have six of those swans in here, so we have three pairs. Uh, the mute swans are really well known for uh, mating for life, so if they find a partner, uh, they will just stay with the same partner for till the end of their life. And even if one partner dies, the other one won't find a new mate, or sometimes they will even die too, uh, out of sadness, out of because they simply stop eating and stuff like that. This is super sad. Because of this and because of the thing that they do with their necks when they are touching their uh uh, they create this heart shape and because of that uh, they became a symbol of the Valentine's Day and I guess that this is the right time to continue with more fun facts about the mute swans. So they are actually not mute. Uh, they were called mute because they are a bit more silent compared to for example a trumpeted swan that is really loud. Uh, the uh, mute swans can still do some chirping, they have some sounds that they make, they also can hiss when they are uh, threatened or they want to scare off their predator uh, or a human, uh, they get really aggressive during uh, the time when they have their young. They are very protective or they, for, of their young. They are building those very big nests that I also wanted to recreate in here. So you'll see those nests in the cinematic shots by the end of the video. I had some nests in this zoo because I created them from for the red crown cranes, but I just made them a bit bigger for the swans. So if you see swans with little ones, it's better to keep your distance because they can really attack you. They are really mean when they have their children. The mute swan is also one of the heaviest flying birds on our planet and they are said to be very intelligent. By the way, I think that plastic swans is probably over the moon that they were added, <laughs> right? When it comes to this enclosure, I really wanted to make it look very natural, very overgrown with a lot of aquatic plants surrounding the pond. I also created a small island for them to chill on, to sleep on and so on. I created this very low fence because uh, the swans will probably have their feathers clipped uh, in such an enclosure so they wouldn't be able to fly out of there anyway and they are not the best jumpers. They are really clumsy on land. They are really excellent swimmers but on land they are just really slow and I think that Frontier just nailed the way of how they are moving both on land on, you know, or in water and overall this model is amazing. The animations are so so well made. Uh, oh my god, I am so in love with this animal and I am so so happy that uh, that they added it. Uh, overall, this entire pack is so so good uh, because I saw some mixed opinions, because I saw people not being too, too over the moon about this uh, and I think that a lot of this comes from those very high expectations. I don't know, a lot of people thought that this winter DLC will be something big, something major, something game changing changing and my question is sort of why <laughs> we are sort of used to the dlcs being the way they are no one said that there's anything super new coming to the game there wasn't any signs for anything new and groundbreaking coming to the game to be completely honest i think i lost hope for like flying birds and aquatic animals like a year ago or something and this made me enjoy those new packs so much more because i am not like expecting anything i am not waiting for something big to happen 
happen. So when Frontiers gives me an animal like a mute swan or a wonderful animal like a sloth bird that I just love, how could I not be happy? This is amazing. They look so, so incredible. Uh, they bring something new to the game, especially the sw swan, uh, but the bear just brings this new type of the quality that the Frontier can now bring to this game, like compare it to the other bears that we have in the game. Like the sloth bear is just like a step up. It's such a like a next level animal compared to some of the like base game or even some of the uh, animals from the previous DLCs. It is so, so beyond good. Of course, if you'll ever get flying birds or aquatics, which again, I don't think that we will. But if this will happen, I will of course be super happy and excited. But not getting them doesn't change anything for me. It doesn't make me not enjoy this game. I still love it. I still am so happy that the support continues and that you are still getting those new DLCs and that they are so good and they look so amazing. So uh, this is sort of my point of view because a lot of you guys actually thanked me for being so positive towards the new pack uh, because you saw some negativity, I guess, in maybe other videos or uh, or online or anywhere else. But for me, when I saw that this is a Eurasia animal pack, so th those are some of the animals that I am so familiar to that are from Europe. Of course, I am a bit biased, but also those are some animals that were really requested by the community. They were on the top of the meta wish list. So of course I am happy because Frontier really listens to the community and really brings those top notch models that are just so incredibly good. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video like this. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And of course, leave me a nice comment if you enjoyed today's video and if you are excited for all the news coming to Planet Zoo. Make sure to check out all of my other new videos that should already be out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!